Hello, and welcome to UT's EcoCar uh, Garage. I'm Dennis Owens. I'm a senior mechanical engineering student, and I've been a part of EcoCar for three years. Hello, my name is Rami Nabati, and I'm a PhD student in electrical engineering. This is going to be my second year in EcoCar. Hi, I'm Joseph Stockley. I'm a master's student in mechanical engineering, and this will be my third year in EcoCar. So, Dennis, what is EcoCar? Great question. EcoCar is an advanced vehicle technology competition also known as AVTC. Since 1988, UT has been a part of 10 different AVTC competitions. Our main sponsors and organizers are General Motors, the Department of Energy, and Argonne National Laboratory. Their purpose uh, to us is to help train future workers uh, by giving us uh, the opportunity to do various hands-on work. On top of that, the other uh, goal is to convert a donated General Motors vehicle into an alternate vehicle, uh, vehicle. So, Joseph, we talk about this uh, other vehicle? Absolutely. So this is our uh, Chevy uh, Equinox. It's uh, a parallel through the road hybrid. That means we have an engine driving the front wheels and an electric motor driving the rear wheels. We actually used to take this out to autocross events and do time attack runs because it was quite fun to drive. And over here in the back, we have our Chevy Malibu. It used to be a series parallel hybrid, meaning that uh, we had an electric motor and engine driving the front wheels, and we also had an additional electric motor driving the rear wheels. We're currently in the process of converting it back to a conventional vehicle so that we can use it as a test mule for our next competition. And then on the lift, we have my personal favorite, 2016 Chevrolet Camaro in which we converted it to a post-transmission hybrid electric vehicle. So both the engine and electric motor drive the rear wheels. It has about 400 total system horsepower. Uh, we took it out to Yuma, Arizona at the Desert Proving Grounds to put it through its paces, like 0 to 60, 50 to 70, autocross, uh, lateral acceleration. We had a lot of fun with it, did very well. Um, so Dennis, what were some of the challenges that we had developing this car? Wait a second, before, before we talk about that, did you say you went to Yuma, Arizona? Absolutely, we, uh, we do uh, quite a bit of traveling for this competition. Uh, we've been to Boston, um, Detroit, uh, Austin, Texas, California, um, for training and even uh, competition presentations to demonstrate all the work that we've done towards this vehicle. Wow, that's pretty cool. Well, a few of the challenges we went through when designing is, make, is uh, making sure that uh, when we're putting multiple uh, unique components into a vehicle that originally wasn't intended to have those, we need to have a form of organization and size management uh, because we're limited to space. So a way to uh, uh, combat that is we trained several of our students in uh, computer-aided design, also known as CAD. This allowed us to have a projected image on a computer of the Camaro. This allows us to integrate various components and iterations of the Camaro. And until we found something right, uh, we were able to just implement it very easily. So uh, one of our products, which we value very much, is our, air, our 3D printed air box, which is right here. It is made out of ABS, and it was made here at the University of Tennessee. If you look closer, you'll see a signature by an individual named Al Oppenheiser. He is the chief engineer at General Motors, and he watches over the uh, Camaro line. He personally said that he adored our Camaro and that it was show worthy. We take much pride in that because a lot of work went into this Camaro. So, Ramin, you want to talk a little about the unique aspects of this vehicle? Sure. Um, what is very interesting about this project is that for the first time in the history of the ABTC series, we actually implemented uh, an advanced driver assistance system on this vehicle. This system is basically a camera we have behind the rear view mirror, and also a radar uh, we have in front of the vehicle. We also have two different processors in the trunk. With this system, we are able to detect any object in front of the vehicle, and we are also able to detect the lanes. So if the, a vehicle is about to have an accident because there is an object in front of it, or if the vehicle is getting out of its lane, the system is going to warn the driver. And the way the system warns the driver is through the vibration devices that we have in the driver's seat. This system currently does not take control of the vehicle, but this is the first step towards an autonomous vehicle. Actually, for the next competition, 
we are going to work on a 2019 Chevrolet Blazer. And for that competition, we're going to actually build a level two autonomous vehicle. So Joseph, can you tell us a little bit about that project? Sure. So for this next competition, this first year, we will be running extensive simulations on to determine what kind of hybrid architecture, along with all the drivetrain components that we want to use. In year two, we will be fully integrating all the these uh, propulsion components into the vehicle. And then year three and year four, we'll be working towards a 99% production quality vehicle that has level two uh, driving capabilities, which are that the driver has to be maintained in the driving um, in terms of visually. However, the car can steer and use the gas and the brake by itself. Um, so who can join us on this project, Ramin? I'm glad you asked. So as you know, this project is a very multidisciplinary project. There are mechanical engineer students, there are uh, computer engineers, electrical engineers. We have even uh, communication and business major students working on this project. We also have different levels of uh, students. We have seniors, we have um, juniors, sophomores. We have even uh, uh, freshman students working on this project. So anyone who is interested can join this project. Um, that's it. Well, we hope we sparked your interest. We've had a lot of fun being a part of this project, and we hope to continue to support it for more to come. Uh, if you have any questions, if you're interested, please leave it down below. And thank you for your time.